KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk. It's Wayne Resnick here. Uh, this is a first, I think, and it's certainly in the history of my program. Um, <laughs> we have a guest, and we have a potential mystery guest. And Oh, good. And the guest un- I had to call the mystery guest because I screwed something up as we begin the segment to talk to the guest. Joining me now from the band sneaker, Michael Carey Schneider. Welcome to KFI. Thank you, Wayne. It's wonderful to be here. I can't tell you, I'm, I'm a big KFI fan. Um, so I would say the, the song most, um, connected to the band Sneaker was a top 40 hit more than just the two of us. Correct. And we're going to hear a little bit of it, but I'm not going to introduce it. I refuse to introduce it. I'm going to let this guy introduce it. Okay. Making their first appearance oh, today God. with us is a dynamite band. They're based here in uh, Southern California, but they have a big hit single, and it's a beautiful song called More Than Just the Two of Us. It's currently one of the biggest songs uh, in the nation. And this is their debut album, and it's called Sneaker. Would you welcome singing More Than Just the Two of Us, Sneaker. So bad. <laughs> Beautiful song. Thank you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about when you were on the Merv Griffin show. Okay. Because you played another song mm-hmm. as well, and he came over and talked to you. Right. I remember. And you talked about the band. Mm-hmm. And you, one of the things you said, like where everybody was from. Right. Most of you were from L.A. Somebody was from, I think, Texas, if, I, mm-hmm. if I'm remembering yeah, correctly. And somebody was from New Orleans, and you said, mm-hmm. oh, that person's from NOLA. Yeah, right. And then Merv Griffin, I guess there's a song called NOLA. So he goes, oh, and I love that song. And he started singing a little bit of whatever this song is. And then, really? and then, actually, this is, I don't know if you remember okay. this. Okay. Then he made a move towards your keyboard. He okay. made a little, he made a move like he was going to start playing your keyboard. I know that. Yeah. Were you upset that Merv Griffin tried to play your keyboard? And, you know, he is no longer with us. I think it's okay. Oh, man. If you let it out now, were you like, dude, you better not touch not. this keyboard right now? Or were you bummed that he didn't play your keyboard? Not at all. I just, I was, uh, I was in awe of being on the show. My God, you know, just to be there on the Merv Griffin show, he could have done anything. The funny thing about the, the funny thing about that, uh, what I remember, I, I didn't know it was going to be that part. I remember when he, you know, he was tinkling on the piano. Oops, and uh, he started saying something about my hair was starting to get gray, and how a lot of the a few of the people he in the did group, he did yeah. point that out, and I think it was you and other members of the um, band were all going premature. Not my, all, but my, a lot yeah. of you were going prematurely. My gray. cottage, my cottage was already going gray. I was starting. And the other funny thing about that, when I watch that, I'm standing, I'm standing on a riser, and he's standing on the ground. But yet we're the same size. Well, you're okay. You're not a man. You're not a man of uh, immense stature, and neither am I. So uh, that's fine. Although now, so you want to tell us any other like behind the scenes tricks? About you, me? you were on a riser to equalize your height. What else? Oh, well, maybe was going on. We there? just happened to be on a riser. It had nothing to do with. Uh, I didn't want to be. I didn't know oh. I was going to be taller. Or although it felt great to be tall for the for that time. But no tricks. You know, they just put us up there and no tricks. 
No tricks on, you know, mm. meaning uh, I didn't what try to make myself look tall. No, but what about any musical? Uh, oh, you mean the uh, lip sync? The lip sync. That's syncing. it, of course. Back That's in. what I'm okay. getting at. <laughs> you lip synced on the Merv Griffin show. Yeah, actually, yeah, big, big thing back then. Uh, in fact, all the shows we did, American Bandstand, always lip sync. Everybody did uh, Solid Gold, same thing, but, you know. That's the way it was, and we were supposed to. I found out later, uh, make an appearance on Saturday Night Live. I, I read a piece of paper I found. We never made it there. Mm -hmm. That would have been our uh, live performance. Oh, and and that's just that was the fashion of the day that exactly. the bands yeah. came on. And what a what a kind of a pain, you know, to set up. I mean, you guys have uh, two keyboardists mm -hmm. and the drummer and the bassist right. and the guitar player, and to, you got to set all that stuff up <laughs> for show. No Let problem. me ask you this: Did you how much? Um, authenticity do you put into a lip sync performance not so much the lip syncing which i which you can't tell mm -mm. but the play like do you actually play the whole thing exactly right or do you just yeah. kind of like nah not at all i mean you're going to do a, your first ever tv performance that was it for me and you i don't know how everybody else does it but you do it you do everything like like you're really doing it you really play the parts and you, you, maybe you could have seen veins popping out of my Neck, I was really singing. Every All of us were really doing all our instruments, you know. And, and what do they do in the, in the, you know, the drummer is hitting drums. So what's exactly. going on in the studio? What are people hearing? Are they hearing the, the recorded track? Yeah. And then they're, and, but they're also hearing yes. kind of what's going on live? Exactly. They got giant uh, playback speakers and the audience hears the track that we recorded. Mm hmm and then, uh, and of course, the guitars aren't really plugged in. And right. The keyboards are not plugged in. Yeah, well, it's a, it was a grand piano, so they don't have a uh, oh. microphone on it. But you play this, and, you know, and the drummer is really drumming. So uh, they may have heard a little bit of the drumming. As they faded out mm -hmm. the track at the end, you could hear the drums coming, you know, in the background. <laughs> right, you can not hear, fading out. Not fading out. Right. <clears throat> All right. Now, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about this band, Sneaker, has multiple connections to Steely Dan. And we're going to talk about those. <coughs> Excuse me, I swallowed down the wrong pipe. And and we uh, probably will have a special guest on the phone mm -hmm. as well. Steely Dan connection. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens here. Michael Carey Schneider from Sneaker. This is Wayne Resnick, KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk. Crozier, what's going on in the KFI News Center? And when you hear me cry, not even just to say goodbye, don't let me in. I said, no, 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 don't oh, let me in. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk. It's Wayne Resnick here until 10. Here in the studio, Michael Carey Schneider from Sneaker. That's a don't let me in. Mm -hmm. That's one of the Steely Dan connections of the band Sneaker, right. because uh, that song was written by uh, Donald Fagan, Walter Becker from Steely Dan. They never recorded it. Correct. I'd like you to... record it. Exactly. But I'd like to say real quick, that's Mitch Crane on lead vocals. And uh... Yeah, you had two, two exactly. you and Mitch Crane kind uh, of uh, traded off right. who would sing lead on the songs. Exactly. Uh, so... Another Steely Dan connection is the name of your band. Mm -hmm. Tell people where it comes from. Okay, uh, that's a tough one to talk about only because well, of what it means it came from a from a book uh naked lunch i forgot who wrote the naked lunch but there was a, a certain object in that uh book it was a uh, long uh, cylinder type of thing that you use to massage yourself mm -hmm. it's called a steely dan and that's where Steely Dan got their well, name. Well, no, I'm sorry. I, oh. yeah, I wasn't expecting all that. I was talking about the name of your band, Sneaker. Well, I wanted to I wanted to put that in there anyway. No. Came from? Okay. From? The song. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, S- suddenly it's vibrator well, talk here. Yeah, well, well, you, the, you no, have to go your back. Your bad sneaker came from the from the song "Bad Sneakers" from exactly. the Steely Dan album "Katie Light." Okay. And the third connection is <laughs> the oh, gentleman who produced both of your albums. Mm-hmm. Yes. Who joins us on the phone now? Oh Very gosh. nice of him to do oh, so, man. ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Skunk Baxter, welcome to KFI, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, Jeff. Wonderful to talk to you. Hey, what did you hear in this band? You could have worked with or not worked with anybody you wanted. That's still the case. What did you hear in this band that made you want to produce these albums? Uh, Great songs and real musicianship. See, that's what I was saying earlier, that on the one hand, one might view the music as soft rock from that whole world of soft rock that was going on at the time. But I hear a bunch of musicians uh, with chops at two, three, four, five levels above soft rock. Is that what you heard as well? Absolutely. And that's, you know, Steely Dan, obviously. Their their calling card was top-notch musicianship. So did you feel that you were like kindred spirits in any way, trying to be, on the one hand, commercial – but on the other hand, inclinations that were more ambitious than that? Well, it was interesting. When we first formed Steely Dan back in 71, I mean, we couldn't get arrested. And then once Steely Dan uh, became uh, successful, of course, everybody wanted to have a Steely Dan band. And there were a, a number of bands, some of which actually, I, you know, I, I had gotten involved with Cruel Shoes and a few other bands. But... Um, it was it is a genre of music that uh not so much that Steely Dan invented but opened the door for, which were uh sophisticated arrangements, really good musicianship and uh quality control, uh excellent uh, audio. Uh you know, Roger Nichols set the standard for uh for audio excellence. So when I heard the band, um it just seemed like there was an opportunity to combine all of those things into uh, um, another another endeavor. And uh, Shelley Weiss and Ron Alexenberg uh, had come to me and said, uh, would you be interested in doing this? And they uh, played me some demos. I said, absolutely. This is, this is fun, exciting, and interesting. And was your involvement more uh, helping shape the, the playing and the arranging or or helping to shape the technical aspect of, of getting the right sound so that they sounded like them? Well, I think the role of a producer uh, is to try to be uh, – to, to leave as few fingerprints as possible on the final project. Uh, uh, certainly the musicianship was there. Uh, they didn't need much from me. Uh, it was really a question of creating the right tapestry so that everybody could uh, could put could thread their needle into that particular tapestry. And uh, was this guy okay to work with, or did he cause problems? Well, I can I can tell you that. He no, had, let him he, let okay, him no. say if you caused problems. <laughs> what do you what, what yeah. do you think, Mister Baxter? No. Was he all right, or did you did you roll your eyes a lot? No, we actually got work done in the studio as opposed to everybody sitting around playing pinball waiting for somebody else to do something. Oh, that's and uh, is that the a, is that the difference between like real musicians and wannabe rock stars? Well, to be fair, again, uh there are there are um there are musicians who do what they do. There are musicians who are prolifer um uh, prolific at their instrument. There are musicians who are stunningly capable at what they do. And I'd say that Sneaker falls in between second, the second and third examples. Um, I didn't have – what I could do is do my craft as a producer and not have to really worry about any of the other stuff. Yeah, there are other musicians. There are some musicians in some bands that I would never hire – on a recording session because that's not what they do yet when they play together they create a certain magic so uh i i don't really you know have a comment so much on people's musicianship because that's a hard thing to measure 
I mean, Bo Diddley only knew one court. <laughs> <laughs> but he played but the uh, hell out of that court. That. I could listen to that forever. <laughs> so uh, it's really, you know, trying to be subjective uh, on that subject is difficult. But as far as Sneaker was concerned, they had the right combination of all of that. It made it very easy for me. Now, let's turn it around. Michael, were you intimidated at all? You know, I mean, it was your first album. Mm hmm. And you have this, uh, let's be honest, superstar mm -hmm. yeah. of the of the music world producing it. Did that create a lot of you know nervous trips to the restroom? Oh, of course. I mean, uh, you know, Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers being uh, two of my favorite bands, and then Jeff Baxter comes into the picture. Uh, I wanted to do anything I could to please him, uh, but I did. I was a little trouble. I could. I say I remember one time we were doing a. The vocal for uh, Looking for Someone Like You. It's uh, the second song on the second side of our first album. And I didn't have my vocals down too too good. And we were at Cherokee Studios, and I was in the, the booth. And I was in there for about no less than six hours trying to get that vocal correct. And he pounded me on it. I got it. You know, I don't know why I, was, I couldn't uh, do it that day, but uh, I don't know if Jeff remembers that, but thanks for that anyway. I, I, I bet you do remember a six-hour <laughs> vocal take, don't you, Jeff? Well, I do, and uh, again, the, the, the situation is I knew he could do it. If I didn't think he would, could do it, then I would have called somebody else. So, <laughs> you oh almost did, you escaped a terrible fate. <laughs> right on. You almost well, were cut from I mean the sneaker album is, by Jeff Skunk Baxter. Oh gosh. Well, and what I mean by that is uh, I've had situations where I've gone in to do, produce stuff and uh, produce bands, and I've seen you know guys – just got it with a guitar, for instance, take three or four hours. And, you know, not wanting to be, you know, problematic, I would just sort of sit there and do it. But it comes to time and say, okay, I know, just give me the guitar. So, yeah. we, you know, you lay it down in the tank and you give the guitar back to the guy and say, okay, now let's move on because what we're trying to do here is in the, in the, yes, we want to capture everybody's artistic um, talent, but we also have a finished goal so that we are all working towards. And I certainly can't sing, but if, if it had come to the fact that Michael wasn't truly able to do that, we would have worked around it. But I just believe that he could do it. It's just as a question of time. Yeah. Um, you definitely oh. got the best out of them. Jeff Skunk Baxter, thank you so much for calling in. It was really cool to talk to you. Well, it's my pleasure. And Sneaker was and is an incredible band. And I'm hoping that people rediscovered just the kind of depth of musicianship in there. Very cool. All right. Good night, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. You all have a good evening. Thank all you, right. Jeff. Bye bye. All right. There he goes, Jeff Skunk Baxter. Um, so let's let's very quickly. Uh, I was asked, "What's your favorite sneaker song?" Mm -hmm. And can we agree? Can you confirm on the air? I had an immediate answer. Yeah, definitely. I was very surprised. And a surprising choice from the second sneaker album, yeah. "Loose in the World." Mm -hmm. Uh, I love this song. Let's hear a little bit of this. It's called <laughs> Quit Crying. <laughs> oh, boy. What a surprise. These albums are available iTunes, Amazon, right on. wherever on. fine music is sold. And uh, it was really great to talk to you. Thank you very much for uh, having we'll me. We'll have you come back.
and talk uh, about more about music. Would love to. Michael Carey Schneider from Sneaker. This is KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk. 